thanks for coming today and thank you so much for all of the speakers today who've um who are, who, are, who have come to talk about uh, building a better food movement. Um, the topic is building a better food movement, better food tra traders and transparency. And we've got some really brilliant special guests uh, here to talk today. I've got Natasha Soares from Better Food Traders, who's gonna be introducing us to this wonderful network. And we've got two food enterprises uh, with us as well. And they are uh, members of the Better Food Traders community, as well as being part of the Open Food Network community. So it'd be great to hear from them about what their experience has been about being part of um, the Better Food Traders Network and how it's benefited them and their, and their food enterprises. And yeah, so I'm gonna, uh, if we could get started um, with you, Natasha, I know you've got some slides to share with us today. So handing over to you. Thanks, Kay. I'll just do that thing, getting it shared. Oh, just as they're loading, I just want to quickly say that if anyone has any questions during the session, um, feel free to put them in the chat, um, or even if you have any comments as we're going through, um, put them in the chat as we go, and um, we'll get to your questions after each section, but there'll also be time at the end for more kind of open Q&A and opportunities to network as well. So, sorry about that. Over to you, Natasha. No, that's great. Um, thanks very much, Kay, and hello to everyone. Um, I was saying just earlier, I find it really strange doing this because I can't see anyone once I've got my slides up, but uh, I trust that you're all there. And uh, it's lovely to be here talking uh, to Open Food Network people. Um, Better Food Traders is a UK wide network. It offers accreditation and support for ethical food retailers. Part of what we do and are doing is shining a light on our members, enabling them to be transparent about their values by showing how they put them into action. This is a picture of the map of our members. I think that was taken off our website a few months ago now, so probably more. And uh, the, the picture of packing is of the growing community's veg box packing yard there in North London, and we're a founder member of Better Food Traders. All of our members sell agroecologically produced fruit and veg. They might sell other food too, but that's our main focus, the fruit and veg. And our members' commitment to their suppliers is long-term, stable and fair, so that producers, farmers and growers can look after soil, air, water and living creatures. Our network launched in January last year, so we've been going for a year and a half, just over, and we're growing steadily. Better Food Traders' aim, as I've said, is to get more agroecologically produced fruit and veg grown and eaten in the UK. And by agroecological, we mean fruit and veg that is grown to organic or better than organic standards and supplied via localised ethical supply chains. Um, we believe that the retailer is key to this. And for most of us, retail or shopping is the crucial link between growing and eating because most of us have to shop to get our food even if we grow some or much food and i'm going to talk about my own food growing a little bit later most of our food is bought and the people who sell us our food are the ones who control where it comes from and the stories that are told about it. And some of those stories are quite transparent. Some might not be quite so clear. And then some stories, I believe, are downright dishonest. At Better Food Traders, we want to tell the story of radical retail, food businesses that centre social and environmental justice at every step of the supply chain. I'm sure everyone in this audience is aware of the way in which supermarkets manipulate the perception of where food comes from by using terms such as farm fresh or fictitious farm names such as Tesco's Willow Farms or Asda's 
farm stores. The pictures on the packaging and the words used reinforce the idea that farms are small, mixed, diverse, and looking after nature. But the reality is often very different. So I'm going to go through some stats and facts, which probably everyone in this audience knows about, because that's why we do what we do, right? But um, I always think it's really important to go back to to go back to this basic knowledge, which is why we do it. So supermarkets control 95% of the UK grocery market share, and that share is still growing. And this is one of the places they get their fruit and veg so that they can keep the story of year round summer going um, on their fresh produce aisles. This is the sea of plastic that stretches over 31,000 hectares of southern Spain. Migrant workers are paid below living wage and live in substandard conditions on the whole. The eight, eight largest publicly owned supermarkets in the world generated almost one trillion pounds from sales. This is in 2016 and over 17 billion pounds in profit. I think those numbers would have gone up since then. Rather than reinvest in their suppliers, the farmers and growers, the same year they returned over 12 billion pounds to their shareholders. The farmers and growers, by the way, just get nine pence on average of the customer pound spent in a supermarket. And supermarkets in the UK use their huge buyer power to exert continual pressure on suppliers to cut costs and to push more and more of the risks of production right back down the supply chain to the farmers and growers at the same time as dictating, exacting, and horribly wasteful requirements. Now, Open Food Network exists to challenge that supermarket dominance, and so does Better Food Traders. Better Food Traders wants to set high standards that are easily recognised so that customers can know that food is being produced in nature and climate friendly ways, as well as being from local and ethical producers with values that go throughout the supply chain. Here's a different story. That's me in the pink top. When I'm not working for Better Food Traders, I'm a top fruit farmer on a small orchard of 17 acres in Kent. We're certified organic and we sell our apples, pears and plums through growing communities and local greens, two veg schemes based in North and South London, who are both members of Better Food Traders. Selling my fruit through this route to market brings me over 50% of the customer pound, compare that to the 9% that supermarkets give. And moreover, I know that these retailers are recruiting customers who understand the benefits of nature friendly farming, and they prioritise this over and above the cosmetic appearance of their fruit. They won't be horrified by a bit of scab on their pears, and the varying sizes of the apples will be seen as a bonus. And I'm aware that OFN hubs send back even more percentage of the customer pound to their producers, which is really, really impressive. This is Metzger and Sita. Metzger grows fruit and veg at Boar Place Market Garden in Kent, and Sita has moved on now to a role in Landworkers Alliance, but worked at Boar Place for a time. Metzger sells his produce to the Better Food Shed, which is a cooperative buying group of better food traders in London. He says this, it's a joy to supply and trade with people who are in it for the right reasons, locally produced, respect for nature and the people who work the land. I hope I can pay this back with good quality vegetables for years to come. The ethos of the Better Food Shed guarantees me and my employees an honest price for our produce, and I hope to grow organic veg for many more years. Although no farming practice is 100% sustainable, every acre farmed organic is a step away from destructive farming practices. I hope and see that our way of farming and trading is about quality and profit for all. And just to say that the Better Food Shed came out of the existence of a group of better food traders in the same region. So we believe that transparency is key to changing the food and farming system in the UK. We need retailers who are telling an honest story. We need more ways in which citizens can really understand how their food is produced so that choices can be made clearly without the greenwashing of supermarkets. 
Membership of better food traders is a great way to tell that story. We want OFN hubs and other community led food enterprises to join the better food traders. Our membership application is short, takes about 20 minutes and is on our website. To become a member of better food traders, we need you to have or to commit to a mission that includes prioritizing a farmer focused and organic food supply. And when we say organic, we mean organically certified, or if you're in direct, if you're buying directly or using a direct route to market or growing yourself, that can be organically grown. We need you to have or commit to a written buying or supplier policy that supports your mission. And we need you to engage with your local community to help promote a localised and seasonal approach to food and to tell the story, the true story of the food you're selling. At the moment, we're assessing only your approach to supplying fruit and veg rather than all the foods you sell. And that's because of our focus on wanting to expand horticulture in the UK. Once you are a member, you're encouraged to apply for accreditation, which means you can tell us more about how your business meets the principles above. You can find out more about our principles and how they work in action in a series of blogs on the Better, Foods, on the Better Food Traders website. Okay, so this is a film. Oh, great, it seems to be working. This is a film that we made this year, starring Better Food Trader member businesses. It's part of a shared marketing campaign for all our members that's going on currently. Let's see if it works. We're a network of fruit and veg traders who put our farmers, communities, and the planet first. Fair pay, less pollution, healthy food for everyone. We work with the seasons, not fighting them. Providing nutritious, tasty food at the time when it's at its best. We're offering a genuine alternative to the current destructive food system. Not on our patch. Find your local Better Food Trader at betterfoodtraders.org and make a tangible and delicious difference. I hope you could all watch that. Um, I didn't run through it earlier, but I hope you could. Um, you may have spotted Duncan in there, looking very cross and folding his arms. Uh, anyway, we want you to join the movement. We want you to join us so together we can learn, share, grow and get noticed. And the more people who join Better Food Traders, the more impact we can have, the louder our voice will be together to change the UK food system for the better. That was wonderful. Thank you, Natasha. What a brilliant video. <laughs> Just, uh... Good. I'm glad you could see it. Yeah, everything worked fine. Thank you so much. Um, really inspiring. And, and yeah, I just want to kind of point out the just the, the confusion that I think most people face when it comes to just like the sea of greenwashing that you have to kind of wade through to get to truth in the in, in the kind of mainstream food system. So really exciting. Um, yeah, yeah, the work that you're doing. So to hear more about that, let's um, move on to our food enterprise guest speakers and so I'm wondering, Duncan, um, since we just saw you in the video, would you be uh, willing to be to go first? Sure, yes, yeah. Um, in, incidentally, if, I, if I'm looking cross in the uh, in the film, I was uh, I was I was acting, you know, I was I was uh, given instructions to look cross and fold my arms, so, but I, I'm really not a cross guy by nature. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of very, very happy to uh, sort of tell everyone about sort of my experience. Um, I, I guess of being a dual open food network uh, member and, and also a better food trader uh, member as well. So um, I, I kind of think bef before before I do that, we we, we never really had a, a, a sort of like a, an introductions session at, at, at the beginning, and um, I think it's sort of Ra Rachel and Emma are, are the the sort of guests who we're talking to today. It might just be nice to hear from them about sort of their projects and. Um, and backgrounds and um, yeah, because they might might be able to sort of like tailor what I say to, to, so it's more appropriate. So um, yeah, um, Emma, do you want to go first and tell us a little bit about yourself? 
Yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. Are you, you're muted. You're on mute, Emma. Yeah. Um, I thought I was just an audience. Hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> First time on Zoom. Um, all new to me. Yeah, wow. hi. Um, I'm a retailer. Um, I took on a broken shop two years ago by mistake. I was just working there. Um, I was given two days notice that it was going to close down. And uh, I took it on and I've been spinning stock ever since. So I'm a small community shop and it was a happy shopper shop. So it's all the stuff that we don't like. It's all mass produced shit. Um, in the two years I've been there, I've, um, I now sell local farmed meat. Um, it's not classified as organic, but it's not touched with anything. It's, you know, as natural as it can be. They've got a small local abattoir as well. Um, again, um, I've local farmers, um, I go and visit. So we have the free range eggs, stock eggs, um, very, very much trying to bring in any small producer I can find. And I've only just discovered the open food network a week ago. So I've I'm absolutely delighted because veg was my, my fall down. Um, so I've got a large community on Facebook and hopefully um, now I've found the veg, uh, I'll be able to start expanding and um, advertising more. Wow, what a story. <laughs> uh <-huh>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've done it all about money as well. Yeah. I've had no backing whatsoever um, just by spinning stock. <laughs> <laughs> wow, excellent. Well, well done you. You're Emma, where home. in the country are you? I'm in Plymouth. Ah, excellent. Yeah. yeah. So I've just linked up with the Tamar Food Hub um, in Saltash, Cornwall. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, Rachel, tell us about you and what you're doing. You're muted, yeah. Here we are. Um, so I'm up in Aberdeen and um, we are in our first year of the Deeside Food Hub up here. We Today was our, one of our hub days, so um, we are slowly building our customer base, but obviously the summer has, uh, has taken people away to other places, but uh, it seems like today we're starting to get back on track, which is great. Um, we've got about... 23 producers um listed at the moment and yeah we're, we're hoping that uh, that we continue to continue to grow um we're in collaboration with a local special needs school um who have given us some space which is fantastic um and quite embedded into the community so um we used to run a festival um and so we've got a bit of a following with that but um yeah we'll see see where it all goes Right. So, yeah, so I, I guess, you know, obviously, I mean, N Natasha's um, sort of main objective for, for this particular session was to try and sort of reach out to and, and find some uh, some new potential members of the Better Food Traders Network. And uh, I, I guess I guess seeing as there's a sort of a, a quite a sort of a select um, number of people here, you know, I, I guess uh, I guess the onus is on uh, you, uh, Rachel and Emma, to, to sort of give, give it some consideration. But um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd love to tell you a bit about my, my own sort of experience. So my, my background is um, I run a business called uh, Cambridge Organic Food Company, which is a, an organic uh, box scheme. It's been going on for some for oh, 20 plus years now. Um, oh, that's just that. Um, sorry about that. Um, and, uh, and more, more recently, um, uh, I've started a project or we're doing a project called the Cambridge Food Hub. And it's through the Food Hub that we are uh, members of the Open Food Network. And we're, we're actually using the Open Food Network in a slightly different way to many of the food hubs that do it in that we use the food. Our, our food hub is more business to business um, directed. So, so we're 
sort of doing show, showcasing a new sort of concept in local food supply chain coordination that's more about sort of direct trade between local food enterprises obviously the uh, the box scheme is more of our uh, customer facing side of the business um anyway so i i guess you know i've uh, i mean i've uh, been involved with sort of box schemes obviously for, for many years and and i guess um you know, being involved with Better Food Traders for a, from a fairly early stage, and, and when I when I found out about Better Food Traders, I mean, it really wasn't an, an obvious choice for us to sort of uh, try to become a, a member of that. Um, to be to be quite honest, it would be unthinkable for a business like mine not to be a member. You know, we'd be conspicuous by our absence if if we if we weren't members. So. Um, that, that's that's the kind of attitude that I'd hope that uh, you know any it, it's it's difficult it, it's good, difficult to really sort of pin down what you know what a better food trader is. Well, obviously, it isn't there's, there's there is criteria you you apply for it and you and you're, and you're sort of accepted in. But uh, I, I think in a more theoretical level, there's that, that sort of you know you'll know you know yourself if you're working in the right area, if your values are right, if you you know if you're, you're conducting your business you know for the right reasons um and 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 so you know if, if you're a business of that type then i i think you'd look at better food traders and think you know absolutely yes i want to be a part of that community um i mean open food network themselves are uh, you know they, they are i describe them as being a community rather than something that's more commercially focused um and likewise you know if, if you identify with the values of the open food network you would identify with the values of the the better food traders so i i guess some of the um some of the headline benefits of why somebody might want to join better food traders would be things like the, the accreditation and being able to sort of like have that have that that badge um and then and some of the resources that you have um sort of access to but um you know and that they are that they're, they're sort of good benefits to have but i i think it's more the the feeling of unity um that has been long absent from the uh you know i i've found in the in the sort of years that i've been doing box schemes for it to be a very sort of like disparate industry you know we're all sort of small scale local enterprises tr trying sort of hard to do our own thing um and, and indeed to that end i i you know i'd noticed i'd noticed this myself for, for probably something like 10 years ago now and, and i actually I actually sort of made made efforts to try uh, start starting an association of um of, of box schemes in the country we, we didn't really sort of amount to much but but through through sort of doing that 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 sort of meant I got in, invited um, uh, uh, Ju Ju Julie from Growing Community sort of in, invited me to a sort of a, a meeting sort of a few years ago when the better food traders was being um, being sort of talked about and yeah as, as I say it was it was a really really obvious uh, choice for us to go for um, I'd say the you know I found the application process to be quite onerous um uh, but in a in a good way uh I, I think the you know the the criteria was quite stringent um and you know it was very very thorough in what what was being looked for but as a result of that i i, I feel that our um sort of accreditation our, our sort of belonging to the uh, better food traders that actually you know has merit to it. it you know it was it was really earned and i i think if um you, you know if people sort of un understand you know what that that those criteria are that you know that that it, it shows that you know your your business re really is sort of quite quite worthwhile so so to to me i think that the better food traders accreditation is something i'm actually rather proud of so um yeah i think that's that's probably as much as i can sort of think to say about better food traders and i'm sure alistair's got some We've got a very worthy stuff to, to add to that. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Duncan. Um, just before we move on to Alistair, I just want to say um, 
Uh, I just want to bring up Rachel's question in the comments because just for the people who are watching the recording so that we cover everything. Um, Rachel, would you like to ask your question out loud or do you want me to read it out for you? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Um, I was just hearing what Duncan was saying, and um, obviously you've got the two strands that that you're dealing with there, you know, the food hub and also the, the growing. So my thought was, will better food traders be of more benefit to, to the actual growers of the fruit and veg rather than to someone like ourselves here um, as Deeside Food Hub? Because yes, we do have some um, veg growers and fruit, but that's not the majority of the products that, that we stock. So um, I'm just wondering where the focus is. Hmm. Uh, do you want me to take that or do you want to, Natasha? Um, I don't mind jumping in there if that's all right. Um, I don't see it as an either or, really. I suppose that's the thing, is that you can be an open food hub um, and open net food network hub and you're providing the sales for those producers but what we hope is that better food traders membership will boost those sales and um, what we also think it is a value for for growers is as it gets more widely recognized it's it's a it's a a kind of mark that growers know means that that is a retailer who will deal fairly with them. It means that growers can find retailers in their area who they can sell to more easily. Um, I don't know if that answers your question entirely, but I definitely don't see it as a either or thing mm. at all. The, the answer I was expecting you to say, Natasha, was that uh, oh, I think better, better Food Traders really is more about the retail side of things, isn't it? It's not about um, the growing side of things. It's more about the, the supply chains and the, and the people that actually bring you the food. Um, so it's, it started off with the, the box scheme. And I, I hasten to add, we, we, we're not actually growers ourselves. We, we're just more of a, we're just a box scheme. We, we um, uh, we, we represent sort of a, a, a group of growers sort of around Cambridge, but we don't grow ourselves. Um, so, so yeah, I, I think it, Better Food Traders started off with box schemes as their focus, and, and um, but I, I believe are already have already sort of expanded beyond that and are starting to um, to in, include uh, sort of shops and, uh, and and other sort of things. But but yeah, it, the, the the focus is 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 the re, is the it's the retail side of things that is the focus of better food traders. And I would, I would have thought any open food network shop front or, or sort of food hub would, would, would make an ideal um, sort of better food trader. My, um, my veg growers obviously are, are selling direct as well. I'm just one of the, the many outlets. So um, I suppose what you're saying is make sure that they know about it too. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I mean, we have got um, some veg growers who sell, who are retailers as well, because, you know, farmer led box schemes are a really clear example of that market stalls, um, you know, are another really good example of that, you know, I'm our business pair necessities that I talked about in the presentation, we're uh, members of better food traders through our retail via our market stall. But just to say that the primary focus I would say is really on the retailer because there are already a number of organizations and networks for producers and farmers who are really good at, at spotlighting those amazing growers. But I suppose what we feel, and I think what you felt Duncan when you did the box scheme survey is there's a real gap around the retailer. And actually the retailer is the person who has most impact on the market because they're telling the story and they're also deciding where they're going to get their food from and pass it along to the customer so um and there there was no values-based network for retailers that you know we're the only one as far as i can see and so you know we've started with what we know and what we can deal with, we're a really, you know, small and new project. So we are looking at horticulture and fruit and veg, but 
you know, in 10 years time, who's to say that we won't be looking at all the food that a retailer sells? Um, yeah, I hope that sort of clarifies it a bit. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and now, Alistair, if, um, if, if, if you'd like to share what it's meant for you and Health and Local Food Hub to be part of the Better Food Traders Network, and that would be great. Okay, will do. Um, well, some of you know who I am, but I'll just introduce Health and Local Food Hub to, to everybody. Um, we started in May 2020, and it's something I've been thinking about for some time, but um, uh, I left my previous job uh, at the beginning of beginning of 2020, and um, so I had a little bit more time to explore it. And but what happened? Well, the the, the, the pandemic happened, and um, Houston Farmers Market, which I had been involved with in the past, ceased trading, and all those producers uh, that were with the market had no market for their produce, and all those customers who used to go to the market had no means of getting getting that food. So. I sort of accelerated my thinking quite quickly and got got something going with the Open Food Network uh, pretty quickly, uh, as quickly as I could, uh, to start in in early in early May. Um, and I started with Helston local, uh, sorry, Helston Farmers Market producers because those are the people who are who are sort of aiming at that. Those are the people that needed it right right at the beginning. So whilst if I had been in my head when I was in February and March, when I started to think about it, uh, about doing a, lo a local food hub, I was thinking about uh, what my principles might be and how I might approach it, and all of that. All that's kind of went out the window. And it was just basically, if you were in the farmers market and you want to join the food hub, come on in. Uh, and about I think eleven or twelve of those producers uh, came in. Interestingly, neither of the uh, fruit and veg suppliers uh, came came in came into the food hub. Um, so over that past year and a year and a bit, we've grown to having about thirty different producers, and we have a sort of it goes up and down quite a bit, especially at the moment. But about a thousand pounds a week uh, turnover, and sort of thirty to forty orders, uh, or up to thirty and forty orders each each week. And I've got about one hundred and fifty people on my who I call well, they're, not, they're not members, but they're people who subscribe to my newsletter. And I sort of those are people who I write to um, on a very regular on a regular basis. So, um, so, so those social producers are a mix of farmers market producers who I uh, came, came in with, with me at the beginning and the other lot who, the other lot, the other people who I've, who I've chosen. And I suppose, um, so and that's chosen, I guess, with my knowledge of, of local food in, in the area and people that I wanted to work with. And those, and and that's tended to be the people who share the values that I that I have and that, that I want. And I thought it was nicely summed up by Natasha. Actually, your farmer at, in Kent, local food with or farming with respect for nature and for people, which is kind of why why I did this, um, why why I set set up this project. Um, so so why better food traders well the flippant answer to that would be that i've known natasha for about 30 years and when we meet we just talk about food all the time and she's so i've known about better food traders for a long time uh, and she's been talking about it and sort of badgering me to to get to get involved so that's the flippant answer but the but it kind of underlies one of the reasons why i've joined it really which is about which is about networks and like-minded people and discussions that you have ar ar around it. And, that's, and I suppose that's what I really loved about Open Food Network when I first joined that, was suddenly I was talking to all these different people um, from different parts of the country and getting great ideas from them, getting strength from them going through the same things that I was going through, uh, getting really sort of practical solutions to problems that I had. And that's that sort of, that breadth of, of of people was was brilliant, and I and and I guess that just you know that being part of a, of a wider network with better food traders just adds immensely immensely to that uh, and to a whole you know, new um, a whole new range of range of people to work with. So as an example of that, uh, I wanted to produce a leaflet 
the other day and I put something out on the the, the Open Food Network WhatsApp or signal group and you know, got some ideas back from that with some a couple of examples of different leaflets. But Natasha also pointed me to um, a network on a Google Drive or something where there were a whole load of best food trader um, uh, leaflets and things. So, so, so my the ideas sort of were I was able to. I've used this phrase before, K. I was stealing with pride, so I was able, you know, steal with steal from other people with all those great ideas. And of course, now I can now I can say, here's my leaflet. So um, that's all that, and that's, I'll be handing that out this weekend. So. So being part of the network is is brilliant, um, and that's one of my main reasons for joining. I think the other one was around um, around values, and as I described when I came into the farm, you know, I just just grabbing people from the farmers market, and really they kind of could have been anyone. The farmers market did have some sort of guiding principles, but they had been sort of rather um, let slip a little bit over 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 recent years. Um, so, so I guess coming to coming into best food drivers does two things, I suppose. One is it's um, I need I think I've signed up as part of the membership to writing some principles for myself for the for the for the business, and that is something I've been talking about doing right from the beginning, and I just haven't done it yet. So there's so there's a bit of a sort of kick up the up the butt to, to do to do that but also very more importantly it's about being able to then to talk to my customers about those values um and and also to talk to my producers about those values so so whilst the people that i've that i've picked are people who i know and trust and and share my values i think there are you know, members of my of my producers who who perhaps aren't necessarily sharing those values, and I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not necessarily always clear where they're buying their you know, their produce from, and or the, any of their raw materials from, if they're if they're doing um, produce uh, food. So, um, so, so it's all. That I'm hoping that going thinking about those principles and using best food traders as a as an example of how I want to work will help bring some of those producers along along that way. Um, so, and I think also it's it's yeah, and as as I said, it helps demonstrate those the values that I hold to um, to my customers, and I'm able to use. So I was I was able to use that great video that we saw earlier on uh, on my Facebook one and link it on my newsletter as well. So it just sort of helps that conversation. Really helps have that conversation with 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 people um, who are coming to my. Uh, who, who people who are buying through Health and Local Food Hub, um, and I guess as well when it comes to and it comes to those values and getting that getting that all sort of written down and um, and done, then I, I I expect there's going to be a wealth of material out there from the other producers uh, the, and the other better food traders to um, uh, to help me to help me do that. So that's probably yeah, that's about all I wanted to say. Really, I suppose the other thing was just about the the membership process, which was really easy for a couple of reasons. One, I think it's really easy to to do. There's not as Ash said, it takes about 20, 20 minutes to do, but also because uh, because of the one I think one of the questions was yeah, how much are you how much are you trading with or, organic fruit and veg? It was then really easy for me to go onto the Open Food Network reports system and and dial back to May 2020 and pick out those producers who who were dealing with that with, with um, those producers who were providing me with fruit and veg and come up with those with the, with with those figures. So it did yeah it did literally take 20 minutes to 20 minutes to do um, and was very and was very simple. So. Um, I think that's 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 me and better food traders. Thanks. Awesome, thank you, Al. Um, 
it's really, really interesting to hear how um, there's that, yeah, being able to kind of go for different resources in within the network. And you know, that's just like one of the wonderful things when we work together. It means that somehow in some ways, like if the amount of work that you have to do or starting things from scratch is lesser, then that makes juggling all of the balls that little bit more easy. <laughs> I say, easy, but yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, so we've got 15 minutes and we're a really small group today. So um, yeah, I, I just want to kind of hand it over and just see what conversations might occur from, from here now that we've all got to know each other. Um, although there is one question from Rachel that I don't think we got to, and that was, um, what is the difference between accreditation and membership? So I don't know if we'd like to start there. That's a really good question to ask, and I was hoping someone would ask it because Duncan told everyone that it was really difficult and only must to fill in the form, and Alistair told everyone that it was really easy, but that's because they're talking about two different forms. Duncan is talking about the accreditation form and Alistair is talking about the membership form. And the reason there's a little bit of confusion there is just because we changed our processes because we're a new organization. So beforehand, we didn't have a membership form. Uh, you went kind of straight to accreditation, which was um, what Duncan did. And um, we were learning as we went in terms of creating what we needed for better food traders. And we had a lot of feedback like very similar to what Duncan said that um, it's a very onerous form and we're being very exacting because it's important right if we want to be transparent it's important that we are telling the truth about and being upfront and honest about what's going on so that means we have to examine our supply chains and and look at really what it is that we're doing and the proportion of sales that are actually nature friendly and that sort of thing so to be an accredited better food trader we we do ask for a lot more detail to be a member of better food traders is more about making sure that you have a commitment to um you you either have or you make a commitment to within a year creating a mission statement that, um, that, that has part of it about prioritizing supply from agroecological farmers and producers, and that you either have or you make a commitment to having a written buying policy that shows us that you are putting that mission into practice. And then the other part of what we want you to do as a member is to commit to your local community because we feel like that's the other side of the coin where the retailer has a lot of power is is building knowledge within communities about the need for localized seasonal food. Um, so those are the things that uh, are in the membership form, as well as just some figures about your sales, which, as Alistair points out, at Open Food Network, you've got a massive head start on anyone else because you can pull those figures out really, really easily. I saw Alistair do it with my own eyes and it was really, really quick. So, yeah, Open Food Networks have hubs have got no excuse for not signing up to better food traders. Um, sorry, just to say also, you know, with accreditation, that, that's like, that's kind of like the creme, la creme de la creme, as Miss Jean Brodie would have said. Who, who will work, you know, so it's showing that you're doing amazing things across all of those nine principles. So to become a member, you need to commit to the nine principles and to be accredited, you need to go that one step further. Yeah, I mean, the way we phrase it on the website is that uh, members are working towards those principles and uh, accredited members are demonstrating those principles in their work. Um, but the three things that we need from you to cross that threshold to becoming a member are the things about prioritising farmer focused agroecological supply chains, um, have it by in your mission statement having the buying policy to prove it, and then educating your local community. So I think Open Food Networks, Open Food Network Hubs 
are all extremely likely to be already doing those things. And are there costs involved? Um, up until um, the end of March 2022, membership is free. After we've been told by our funders that we need to demonstrate um, some income generation of our own. So we have done consultation on membership fees. And so from April 2022, there will be a membership fee involved, but it will be very low and tailored to the type of enterprise that you are and what your turnover is. So it really will be something that you will be able to afford. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Just to say, I've just put um, a link to your website in the chat um, for anyone that might want to visit it. Um, and I was wondering also, Natasha, if it would be possible, um, that amazing video, if you could, if you could, uh, if, if not sharing it here now, perhaps share it in one of the event pages for this so that if um, anyone that's here today or anyone who's watching the replay might want to share that on their own social media feeds, then they can, they can access it. Um, oh, sorry, you're on mute. <laughs> You'd think you'd have got the hang of it by now, but no, I haven't. Um, yeah, it's it's actually on our website. It's on embedded in the front page. Is that a way in which people can share it from there? Yeah, I, I'll, I will check if it's like um, I think if it's like a YouTube video on your phone. Yeah, yeah. Then I think they'd be able to open it in YouTube and then share it. So. Yeah, um, if not, I'll I'll hunt the title and just pop it in the event page. If, I, if it's not, I'll test it after the session is what I'm saying. So um, for anyone who's watching the replay, if you look in the event page um, for this session, um, you'll find a link to Better Food Traders website as well as a link to the video that, that yeah, you need to, to take a look at. Um, cool, does anyone have this? Oh, thank you, perfect, cool. I'll share these in the event page as well. So does anyone else have any any other questions or anything else they'd like to add to the conversation? Duncan? I just, just wanted to, I, I, I did a very cheeky thing at the end there and I, I, I did a, uh, I wanted to plug my book, uh, Local Food Ecosystems, How Food Hubs Can Help Create a More Sustainable Food System. And I've, uh, ah, thanks Alistair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I've, I've, I've posted a link to the website for that book uh, into the chat, so. Uh, anyone's interested have you read it all yet al <laughs> have you finished it yet <laughs> no i haven't i'm on chapter three i'm working my way working my way through it but i've already used it i've, I've already used it in my state i've already used it in my newsletter so uh, i'm expecting it to be great material to uh, keep me going for weeks on end brilliant um, and just to say for anyone who's watching the recording, I'm going to share a link to that as well in the event page. So if you're looking for it, it's there and it'll also be below in the in the comment section um, on YouTube. And also, um, Duncan joined us a couple of weeks ago for a really amazing seminar. Um, so I'll share that YouTube video as well in the event pages for this session. So if you want to watch that, it's um, a very complimentary topic. So it was a really great session. So thanks for that, Duncan. Cool. So I think we've got five minutes. Um, does anyone else have anything else they'd like to add to the conversation or any other questions? I feel like it's been a pretty thorough session. It's, it's always when it's like a small group, it's quite nice because you get to know each other. So thank you so much for that, Duncan, as well, by encouraging us all to say hello and get to know each other. I think that always leads to the best, best sessions. And there's also part of what we've all been talking about, about how important networking is and, yeah, feeling part of an amazing group of, of people making a difference to the, to the food system. So if that's everything from everyone then, then maybe we'll finish a little bit earlier. And like I said, all the links, um, if you're looking for them, they'll be on the event pages on the YouTube page with the recording of this session. Um, so that I should be finishing the editing by the end of this week. So it'll be up and ready to see um, soon. And I just want to say a massive thank you to, yeah, to, to everyone who came and, and spoke and shared today. It's a really lovely session and really inspiring and awesome. So thank you. And yay. So thanks everyone. I hope you have a lovely evening and really good to see you all. And, um, and yeah, if you're watching the recording, um, uh, yeah, um, thanks, for, thanks for watching. And 
with that, I'll say I'll say goodbye. Thanks, everyone. Bye, Thanks. everyone. Thanks, Kate. Thank Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.